50 years. It takes commitment, desire, and passion to do something, anything for that length of time. Yet within that amount of time, there are generally small periods that had massive effect, building blocks to something great, something historic. I love cars. I used to take them apart at home. Uh, most kids uh, were doing something else on Saturdays. I had the engines apart in the wash tub. But... Sensing his son's love of racing, Julius Penske took his son to the 1951 Indianapolis 500. My father had a couple extra tickets uh, to go to the Indianapolis 500. I remember I was able to sit in and put the helmet on, and, and I felt like I was uh, probably uh, going to drive in the race that weekend. In 1958, having moved to Philadelphia, Roger began his career as a race car driver. In 1961, he was named the Sports Car Club of America Driver of the Year by Sports Illustrated. Roger earned an opportunity to take the Indy 500 rookie test with legendary car owner Clint Browner. Then came one of the most difficult and historic decisions in motorsports history. You see, Roger had a new burgeoning Chevrolet dealership in Philadelphia. He believed the most responsible decision would be to concentrate on his new business venture. So on that date, May 11, 1965, Roger Penske effectively retired from driving. In his place, Browner tested a young Italian racer from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. His name, Mario Andretti. Roger turned his competitive focus to team ownership, and one year later, Team Penske was born. Success came quickly for Roger's newly formed team. In fact, the organization won its first race, a GT class win in the 1966 24 Hours of Daytona with drivers Dick Goldstrand, George Winterstein, and Ben Moore driving a Corvette Stingray. The team followed that up with a victory in another significant American endurance race, the 12 Hours of Sebring. It's hard to imagine a more impressive start. Well, this season has been uh, really one that I guess our whole team won't forget. Team Penske had been competing in the Indianapolis 500 for three years when the team rolled into Gasoline Alley for the 1972 500 mile event. Mark Donahue, had already won 49 races in various series for the team. However, a win in the 500, the race that Roger holds higher than any other, had thus far eluded them. Donahue took over the lead on lap 187 and led the final 13 laps for the historic victory. Donahue also produced the team's first NASCAR win at Riverside International Raceway in Riverside, California in 1973. In Donahue, Roger Penske had found the cornerstone on which to build his motorsports castle. We feel that our car is about the best prepared one here, and uh, we're going to run it to finish and uh, hope that we're way up there at the end. As the decade of the 70s came to a close, Team Penske had become one of the premier race teams in the world. We get paid to win. If we don't win, we won't be around, so that's kind of our motivation. Enter a talented former off-road racer from Bakersfield, California, who just needed to find the right team at the right time to unleash his potential. On May 28, 1979, Rick Mears earned the first of his record-tying four wins in the Indianapolis 500. That year, he also won his first of three IndyCar titles. That season propelled Team Penske into the 80s, when the team scored six more Indianapolis 500 titles with names like Unser and Sullivan, along with Mears. Over the course of that decade, Mears became a star and a true American icon. But more important, it was the way he carried himself throughout his spectacular career. No driver has personified the Penske way more than Mears. In 1991, fresh off his series championships two years earlier, Rusty Wallace became the second driver to compete full-time at the highest level of NASCAR for Roger Penske. I called up Roger and said, hey, do I have enough experience now to hook back up with you? And his answer was, hell yes, let's get going. During the course of the 1993 and 1994 seasons, the pairing of Wallace and crew chief Buddy Parrott would prove to be spectacular. 
a total of 18 wins and 36 top five finishes over those two seasons, firmly planted the Team Penske flag into the NASCAR landscape for good. When he retired from racing in 2005, Wallace had amassed 37 NASCAR Cup Series wins with Team Penske. His success throughout the 90s cemented the team's place among the upper echelon of NASCAR organizations, a perch it continues to occupy to this day. Team Penske became the only motorsports organization to compete successfully in both NASCAR and IndyCar at this time. Throughout the 1990s, the IndyCar team continued its dominance. Rick Mears, Emerson Fittipaldi, Al Unser Jr., and Paul Tracy combined for 38 wins, three Indy 500 titles, and two series championships. Building a new engine, all under the cloak of secrecy, is rarely an achievable feat in the world of motorsports. Yet that is exactly what Team Penske and their partners at Ilmore Engineering were able to do for the 1994 Indianapolis 500. Utilizing an overlooked loophole, the Mercedes-Benz 500L pushrod power plant became the stuff of legend. Keeping the production of these parts and testing the new engine a secret became a project that James Bond would be proud of. We'll be running this car next week and the week after and probably running it during the month of May to try to get the durability we're gonna need to finish this race. Now, it's one thing to say you've got a new formula and a new engine, but we have to finish the race. Team Penske used the Ilmore power to dominate much of the month of May. With 25 laps remaining in the race, Fittipaldi and Unzer Jr. were the only cars on the lead lap, paving the way for little Al to win his second Indy 500. The talented trio still managed to win 12 of the 16 races on the 1994 PPG IndyCar World Series schedule. In 2006, Team Penske became the first LMP2 team to win a race overall when they finished 1-2 at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. In 2008, they led Porsche back to victory lane in the 12 hours of Sebring. This marked Porsche's first win in the race since 1988 and the first time in 14 years that a non-premier class took the overall win. Elio Castroneves took the IndyCar series by storm in 2001 by winning the Indianapolis 500 on his first try. A year later, he became the first driver to win back-to-back -back 500s in his first two attempts. When Gilles DeFerron won the 2003 and Sam Hornish Jr. won the Team Penske's 14th 500 in 2006, the team was riding high when it came to Indianapolis. Castroneves scored another win in the Indy 500 in 2009. Open the door to the three-time winner's club. There's a brand new member and his name is Elio Castroneves. Daytona has been something that eluded us for so many years. The 2008 Daytona 500 was to be special. It was the 50th running of Star Car Race's biggest event. Even the Harley J. Earl Trophy was plated in 24 karat gold for the occasion, setting the stage for one of the biggest wins in team history. With an assist from teammate Kurt Busch, Ryan Newman took the checkered flag to give Team Penske a 1-2 finish in a race that everyone wanted to win. Talk about conquering a race in style. The one piece of hardware that eluded Roger Penske was a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series trophy. Few believe that in just three full seasons of competition, a brash young driver would deliver the one thing needed to complete the mantle. Brad Keselowski came to Team Penske at the end of the 2009 season with lows of potential. Keselowski and crew chief Paul Wolf immediately showed why they were such a force in winning the 2010 NASCAR Xfinity Series title as they won their first cup race together in their 13th start. Expectations were higher in 2012, and the duo did not disappoint. Scoring five wins on the year, Keselowski stared down Jimmy Johnson, a five-time series champion at the time, all the way through the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway to give Roger Penske the NASCAR Cup Series championship that he had desired for so long. 
Following Will Power's Verizon IndyCar Series Championship in 2014, Team Penske headed into the 2015 season with seemingly every box checked on an amazing five-decade run. 15 Indianapolis 500 wins and a Daytona 500 trophy were sufficient in placing the Team Penske name among the most diverse race teams in the world. Wouldn't it be amazing to win both of those legendary races in the same year? That is exactly what happened in 2015 as Joey Logano won his first Daytona 500 and Juan Pablo Montoya picked up his second Indy 500 win. In addition, Team Penske began its first full season in the Australian V8 Supercars Championship, giving the team an opportunity to shine in another of the world's biggest races, the Bathurst 1000. 50 years, more than 80 drivers, over 420 wins, over 480 pole positions, numerous national championships, and most important, a respected name all over the world. That is the Penske way.